What's up everyone, Brian here from Exact IT Solutions. Welcome to another edition of Guess Who Got Hacked and Attacked this week. It's been a couple weeks since I was, I've been able to do a video in this series. Uh, so I have a bunch of things I wanna get through. I'll try to get through them as quickly as possible. Uh, but before we get into that, remember we do not uh, charge uh, any money for this content. We do not get paid in any way. Uh, we do not do sponsors or uh, anything like that to annoy you because we feel like ads in the middle of a YouTube video while you're talking is really annoying. Uh, but there is a fee and the only fee that we ask is that you hit the like button. Maybe consider subscribing to our channel and sharing our content out to your friends and family. So. Today we're gonna to talk about uh, a bunch of attacks that happened. So without further ado, let's jump into today's content. All right, so the first one we're gonna kick off with here today is the manage.com has been hit by Revel. Uh, we've talked about Revel in the past. We know that they are a Russian-speaking uh, cyber criminal organization. Uh, they have demanded, it seems to be on a low side to me, 500K um, to unlock the servers over at uh, uh, manage.com. So it happened on Monday the 16th of November, four days ago. It appears that they originally threw up a, a message that there's unscheduled maintenance um, and uh, it says that uh, but eventually they revealed um, that the reason was uh, ransomware and it says uh, it remains unclear how long the web hosting infrastructure might remain down it could take weeks to repair the damage um, and in the article, it also uh, goes on to say um, that it took down its entire web hosting infrastructure. And when you're in the business of web hosting, this is a big deal. And I'm I'm absolutely floored that the number is only 500k. Um, so they they took down a lot of managed WordPress, .NET nuke sites, um, email servers, and DNS servers. So they hit this this manage.com hard revel did and they are in the midst of cleaning up from this attack uh we also had capcom the big um ga video game uh developer they have confirmed a recent security incident due to ragnar locker ransomware which we've also talked about on this channel uh many times uh, this week, the Japanese gaming giant confirmed that the company had fallen prey to customized ransomware, which gave attackers unauthorized access to its network, as well as data stored on Capcom group systems. Uh, uh, the firm says it's verified that some personal information was compromised, uh, adding that the ransomware outbreak destroyed and encrypted data on its servers. Um, the Capcom uh, goes on to say Capcom has provided an extensive list of confirmed and potentially compromised records. Um, and there's also reports that um, video game development schedules and some of the actual video games themselves have been posted uh, on the dark web and things like that. So uh, Capcom, major, major uh, global corporation, uh, was hit uh, earlier, uh, I believe it was, uh, I'm not sure if it was this week or last week, I think it started over the weekend or last week, but um, they are still reeling from from that. Um, so ransomware attacks hit Arizona Judicial Branch website and limit some of its service. Uh, the Arizona State, uh, in, in um, the United States, Arizona Judicial Branch is dealing with the aftermath of a ransomware attack against its internet service provider this week, according to a court spokesperson. Uh, that spokesperson said the Arizona Supreme Court said that the impact appears to be limited to information connected with azcourts.gov website and does not affect individual court or clerk's offices. 
The attack caused portals allowing people to access protective orders, uh, defensive driving classes, and seeking other information to be down for periods of time during the week. Uh, the attack on the branch of service provider managed.com occurred Monday. So uh, as you can see, this um, Arizona courts use managed.com to host all this uh, information or host these services uh, for the people of Arizona. And because managed.com was breached here, uh, now you have uh, the, the downstream effect of when a company uh, gets hit and that their, their vendors and their clients are also affected by this. And this goes to what we talk about on this channel, which is making sure you're vetting the third party people you're working with. Um, the people, like if you have a website or you have somebody providing you, let's say IT services, accounting services, um, human resource services, what happens if they have an issue and they're not able to operate? How does that impact your business? Um, and these are things that need to be considered today and thought about and, and built into a company's recovery or disaster recovery plan uh, so that when these things do come up, you kind of know what to do. And it's not like everybody's scrambling around trying to figure out what to do. Um, this is a ransomware attack that shuts down the Jackson County website. Jackson County is down uh, following... Um, and I'm trying to figure out what Jackson County this is. I'm not able to pick that up. So uh, Jackson County's website is down following a ransom attack on the, on the company providing its web hosting services. Again, this is managed.com. Seems like a lot of uh, government entities are using managed.com for their hosting services. And we have another one here, jackson.com that was taken down as a result. Columbus County website, same thing here. Uh, it was initially reported as a website outage by Columbus County, turns out to be something more sinister, a direct attack on the county's web hosting service, and it's another web hosting service. Um, you know, another, another customer of manage.com getting hit. Uh, continuing on, ransomware as a service creates a pressing need for more secure backup as a service. And moving on, we have another attack here with uh, Northampton Area Public Library it had the temporary close according to a message posted on its website Monday. Um, we hope to be open to the public soon. The affected computer servers were taken offline and some library services have already been restored. So this is another uh, example of ransomware affecting a government entity this in this case it was a live a library system and that library system uh, unfortunately suffered a ransomware attack uh, Northampton County is in Pennsylvania uh, and unfortunately that their library system uh, suffered a ransomware attack and knocked them offline uh, Annapolis e track it system could be back online replacement company hit with ransomware attack in September and it says Annapolis's license and, and permitting system, eTrack It, could be back up and running as soon as this week. The company selected to replace the program that has a history of working with the city and dealing with cybersecurity issues, most recently battling a ransomware attack that did not compromise the city system. So another 12-year-old um, program that they had has been shut down for almost two months after suspicious sites were discovered on its server. Uh, managed by Central Square. The program has been offline ever since. Um, as a stopgap, the city has provided rudimentary website to view the status of permits. Hmm. So it looks like they uh, did tap to replace eTrackit. Um, the company tapped to replace eTrackit is Tyler Technologies, who we talked about on this channel. And it goes on to say, They've had problems of their own. In late September, the Texas-based company was hit with a ransomware attack, a form of malicious software used to infect computer systems in exchange for money. So Tower Technology provides software to state and county governments across the country. Um, and now Tyler is, is obviously still getting business here from uh, Annapolis and uh, 
you know, we wish them the best of luck there. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, Americold, one of the oldest companies in the United States, has been brought to a screeching halt following a cyber attack that has the earmarks of a ransomware incident. An Atlanta based Americold Realty Trust, also known as Americold, reported the following in a press release. On November 16th, 2020, Americold Realty Trust determined that its computer network was affected by a cybersecurity incident. As a precautionary measure, the company took immediate steps to contain the incident and implemented business continuity plans where appropriate to continue ongoing operations. The company has notified and is working closely with law enforcement, cybersecurity experts, and legal counsel. It's a 117 year old company, has uh, 1.4 billion uh, in revenue in 2019, and they have been taken down by ransomware attack this week. Um, <clears throat> hackers hit COVID-19 biotech firm cold storage giant with cyber attack. Cold storage giant Americold and global firm, uh, I'm not even gonna try that, but Milton I, Milton Yai Biotech recently faced cyber attacks. Um, and then we already talked, we just talked about the um, Americold, but uh, the, the uh, Milton Yai is a global, a biotech firm based in Germany with offices in 73 countries, including several in the US. The company is responsible for supplying SARS-CoV-2 antigens for research firms tasked with working with COVID-19 treatments. The attack struck their IT infrastructure two weeks ago, which caused an issue with some order and operational process, including email and phone communications. Uh, the company has since fully restored its operations. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, that they got back, but they did get hit within the last two weeks. E-commerce software vendor Xcart has suffered a ransomware attack, which brought down customer stores hosted on the company's hosting platform. And uh, it goes on to say uh, that Xcart is believed to have taken place after attackers exploited a vulnerability in third-party software to gain access to Xcart's store hosting systems. Some stores went down completely, while others reported issues with sending email alerts. Um, it goes on to say um, that the um, with the holiday season fast approaching, retail companies should expect to see continued increase in online consumer buying patterns due to COVID-19, and hackers are going to use this time of year to uh, exploit retailers, especially online retailers, because they know that this is where most of the business is done and you're gonna pay to get your, your site and your systems back up and running as quickly as you can. Um, moving on, so we have uh, Cone Healthcare, Cone Health, uh, disclosed on November 4th that met one of its medical practices was hit by a ransomware attack. Uh, they are in Greensboro, North Carolina and leaving patient data unrecoverable. Uh, the Cone Health practice uh, uh, was hit by ransomware attack in late July. Uh, the Burlington, North Carolina based practice EHR and servers are separate, separate uh, from Cone Health System. So the health system's network was unaffected. Um, but while no patient data was stolen during the attack, Cone Health determined that uh, October 21st, that the data involved in the cyber attack couldn't be recovered. So um, either they tried to pay, because um, this is a good kind of, uh, illustrates a good point. Um, it doesn't mean they didn't try to pay. It doesn't mean they didn't try to recover from backups. Um, Sometimes ransomware, when you're attacked, it doesn't, even if you pay the ransom, uh, the criminals to unlock your files, sometimes the files don't get unlocked. I think it's it's about a 90 to 92% success rate where it does uh, unlock all the files, but there is about 8% 
but there is about 8% of the people who uh, don't have their, um, their, their ransom, their files that are, that are encrypted, they don't, they don't get them recovered. So that is, a, that is an issue, that is something that companies have to deal with. Um, that sometimes you can get ransomware and sometimes you don't get your files back at all. Um, so Mansfield schools, Mansfield uh, public schools, internet traffic, we've talked about this before with DDoS attacks on schools to slow down their internet because they know the kids are um, going to school remotely and a DDoS attack just sends a bunch of traffic to the school's internet system, bots it down so it makes it difficult for teachers and students to connect with one another. Hackers, for some reason, are, are using this as a way to extort money from these school districts. Um, and we've seen it before. And here's another example of a school district who, unfortunately, is getting hit with a DDoS attack. Uh, and it is an illegal attempt to disrupt disrupt traffic and disrupt operations of an organization. So, um, so Red Wing Shoes, a big uh, a big shoe manufacturer. A lot of people know who this company is. They they do sell a lot of shoes. They're based out of Minnesota, uh, in the United States. Red Wing Shoes shut down its e-commerce website on Halloween. In response to a cyber threat, the company said on Friday, November 13th, but nothing indicates that a data breach occurred. And it just goes on to say, around Halloween, they were investigating a cybersecurity incident. Upon discovering the incident, the incident, our response team took immediate action to understand and contain the threat, including taking systems offline to limit uh, potential damage. As a result, we are temporarily, temporarily unable to receive calls or process orders and at this time, we have we have been able to restore service to some systems and services, and are continuing to work on restoring the remaining systems. They don't really go into specifics of what was what's going on here, but the fact that they're saying that they're restoring systems um, leads leads me to believe that they probably had some kind of ransomware attack uh, on their systems. All right, moving on. So we have the Port of Kennewick, Washington and Washington State in the United States. The Port of Kennewick has learned it was victimized by a digital ransomware attack. Cyber criminals circumvented our systems, placed an extremely sophisticated encryption lock on the port servers and demanded $200,000 in ransom to restore access to the port servers and files. This was a differentiated cyber attack with sophisticated military grade encryption focused on locking the port servers and holding those servers hostage to lever leverage a ransom. Um, you know, it was ransomware. There, you know, it all works on the same technology. There was nothing special here, even though that the, uh, the article may give that impression that it was something special. Um, you know, ransomware is special in itself, but at the end of the day, it's just another flavor of ransomware. There was nothing like uh, different or crazy about this particular attack. Uh, that we don't see. And our last one for today, and there's been a ton, yes, I know. Uh, Oglethorpe County students stayed home Thursday and Friday uh, because, uh, not because of COVID, but the main reason for the school closing in these days, uh, the rural school system was hit with a ransomware attack. The attack took down computer and phone systems. Oglethorpe students uh, won't return to class before November 30th as they are out next week for the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, <clears throat> but they are working on um, uh, recovering from a ransomware attack. They've been in contact with the FBI. And here is just another example of a organization uh, like the many that we covered today that were hit by ransomware in the last week. So. Uh, as you can see, there is no shortage of ransomware attacks in the news. Uh, it did not take me very long to find all this information. Um, and guess what? We only know about 10% of them. So there's 90% that don't make the news, that don't get reported. And the reality of it is, is that these attacks are prevalent. They're happen happening every day to small and medium and large organizations. It doesn't matter what size you are. These attacks are happening. They're, they are uh, 
devastating when they do happen. Uh, many, many companies are not prepared for what to do and how to deal with ransomware when they are under fire. Um, and that's why it's important that you understand it's not a matter of if, but when, and it's going to happen to you, so you might as well start preparing now. So if you're not preparing, get somebody to help you. This is what we do at Exact IT. We help companies understand how to implement cybersecurity and do technology in their business the right way so they, even if they do become a victim of ransomware or are attacked in some way, shape, or form, they are able to recover from it successfully. They can handle it with, with uh, professionalism and they can handle it as best they can under the circumstance. And then when they get through the initial event, they're able to recover and get back to business. So that's it for this week, folks. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure you give us a, a thumbs up on the like button. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Take care.